Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition, and today I figured we'd bring you a how to play of The Shores of Tripoli. This is a strategy game by Kevin Bertram, or Bert Ram, I guess may I should say correctly. This is a U.S. Navy and Marine Corps versus the um, Pirates at Tripoli. And this is a historical game, so if you're thinking Wild Pirates on the Seas and all that stuff, I'm trying to see if it has it on here, it doesn't. Um, Wild Pirates on the Seas, that's not what you're going to get. This is a historical game. Though it's still fun if you're into that stuff. So let's go ahead and get into this how to play. It says it takes about 90 minutes to play through the game. Um, and it's a two-player game. It's, it's all you can play is two players. All right. So first off, let's go ahead and get this game set up. So what do we want to do when we set up the game? This is one of the books where it doesn't tell you to put out the player board. But of course, you need the player board. So... Common sense, get the player board out. All right, the first thing that you want to do is you want to set up the American player. And they're going to set up on the north side of the map. So for the setup of the American player, you want to put three frigates into the uh, harbor at Gibraltar in Tripoli. Or Tripoli, sorry. In the harbor in Gibraltar. I'm looking at the name right there. <clears throat> Next, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put a frigate at the year um, 1802, 1803, and 1804. After that is done, you want to put out the Americans' three core cards. And the way you could tell it's a core card is, yeah, I have them sleeves, sorry for the light, is you have this little symbol down here, that little circle symbol. That means it's a core card. So these cards go out. Face up. All right. Then we want to set up the tri Tripolitan. I want to keep calling them Tripolitans, but that's wrong. It's Tripolitan. The Tripolitan side, which they're obviously set up here on the south side. And what you want to do is you want to put two Corsairs in the harbor of Gibraltar. And I'm going to say this later, but don't worry. Or just remember, they can't fight when they're in this harbor. The English are kind of watching them. Saying, be good peoples. All right. So, <laughs> then you want to place four Corsairs down here in the harbor of Tripoli. After you have that done, then you want to go ahead and put four infantry in Tripoli. You could say the harbor of Tripoli in Tripoli. You want to put two in Benghazi and then two in Dern. So, you make sure you have the Tripolitan. Uh, army forces set up in the cities they need to be set up in. All right, then just like the Americans, you get the three core cards and you go ahead and put them out for the Triple E10 player. That's going to be hard for me to do, but I'm going to keep trying. Triple E10 player. All right, after that's done, you shuffle the remaining 24 cards for each of the decks and you set them in their respective spaces. Um, you go ahead and put out the ships and the infantry and stuff. Um, it says in the box on the board, I'm probably just reading it wrong, but I just kind of set them out along the board. So these are all supplies that we'll get our hands into later. All right. Then once you go ahead and do that, the next thing you want to do is you want to put a marker on the year 1801, and then you want to put another marker over here on spring. Once that's done, you want to make sure that you take the 12 gold and you give it to the um, American player. I think it actually in the book says to do this a little bit earlier, but the 12 gold you give to the American player. All right, now we're set up. Of course, you wanna put out the dice. I don't know, this yellow die was right here. You wanna go ahead and put out the dice that you're gonna use. Also, once that's all set up, you're ready to play the game. So, before we play the game, Let's talk about a couple things, or before we go over how to play the game. So let's go over areas on the map. Now, all the action really happens in the nine harbors. So you have Gibraltar, you have Tangiers, Tangier, not with an S, you have Algiers, then you have Tunis, you have Tripoli, you have Benghazi, you have um, Dern, and then you have Alexandria. You also have um, patrol areas, as you can see with these half circles, right? And you have five patrol areas. So you have nine harbors, five patrol areas. 
Out here, this is just called open water, right? And uh, oh, I'm sorry, you have your um, harbor right here in Malta. Don't forget that. It's where the U.S. gunboats go. It's where the frigates go back after they get shot. So we have our nine harbors. We have our five patrol zones that we can put ships and ships can move around in. All right, so now you might want to know how do you win the game before we go into the mechanics of how to get there. Now, for the Americans, they have cards. Let's see if I kind of set this up correctly. Three, they have cards. The Americans have cards that they have to get out and play, right? So there's two ways um, the Americans can win. They can march on Tripoli, right? They can have um, Hamet's army make it to Tripoli, fight and win. Or they can get them to the Tripolitans to sign a peace um, treaty. So those are your, the two options that you have as an Americans. And I probably won't be able to pull it off really quick, but the other cards in here, right, that gives you the win condition for the Americans, I just didn't see as we flip through, right? So it's either by treaty, you force them to treaty, or you march on Tripoli. And those are both based off of a card that the American player would play. Now, for the uh, Tripolitan player, I'm working on it, Tripolitan player, to win, there's a couple ways to win, but basically you're trying to make it too costly or too bloody for the Americans to keep fighting. So they just decide to give up. So how do you go about doing that? All right? And the first thing is you can go out and do your pirate raids and collect up 12 gold. If you get 12 gold, game is instantly over. Triple 10, Tripoli 10, um, win, sorry, Tripoli 10 win the game. That's one way, right? The second way, they can sink four American um, frigates. When a um, Tripoli 10 player, or when the Tripoli 10 player sinks an American frigate, it goes over to their side of the board, and if they get four of them, the game instantly ends, right? And the Tripoli Din um, player wins. Now, the last way that this can happen is Hemet's army, which is represented by these white cubes, and you'll have some sprinkling of um, blue uh, cubes representing marines in there. How you do that is you have Yusef's army, which is the Tripoli Tin uh, army, defeat all these. So if all of Hamet's army is gone and the Marines are gone and you would lose them by battling for the harbors and stuff, if they're all gone, game um, is over and the Tripoli Tin player wins. So the Americans have the two cards that they have to get out. The um, Tripoli Tin player either wins by grabbing 12 gold, sinking four U.S. frigates, or decimating Hamet's army. So obviously it has to get out on here. Now Yusuf and Hamet have the same last name. It's Quarimanli. Quirmon I should be able to say these correctly, but I can't. All right, so <laughs> those are your win conditions. Now we have that all set up. We are ready to dive in. So how this game is played is it's played over years and seasons. So first you go through the season, right? You go through each season, then you go through each year. So how this works is there's seasonal rounds, right? And the, during the seasonal round, you get the American player, then the Triple E10 player plays a card, and then you go ahead and you go down and you do end of season, which is just moving this forward. But let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so at the start of each year, you're in spring, and it's the start of the year. Each player draws up six cards from their deck. All right, so you grab one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and they get those six cards. I just realized there's no space to even show these sitting out over here. So for the Americans, let's go ahead and just go like that. They grab their six cards. You can kind of see it there. And the Triple Eaton player grabs their six cards. And this is at the start of the year. One, two, three four, five, six. All right, this is the start of the year, not the start um, of each uh, season. It's the start of the year. So we'll kind of just set theirs down right here. All right. So once you have that ready and you do that for 1801, 
through 1804. So at the beginning of each year, you would draw six cards and as soon as this moves over, right? Now, in the start of 1805, so when this marker gets to 1805, which means it goes through a season it moves, once it gets to 1805, you take all your discarded cards, you shuffle them all together, and draw six cards. Now, you have to remember your hand limit can only be six. You can only have six cards in your hand. So if you have two cards left over and you draw six, all right, you obviously have, you have eight and you have to go back down to um, six cards. You get to choose and you discard the rest. All right, and then in 1806, this is the last year and it's closing on the end of the game. Both players will take all the cards that are left in the draw deck, put them into their hand, and then once again, pair it down to six cards. All right, so that is each year as you go through that. Now, let's go back here. So how the play, how each round goes through is the American player goes, the triple E 10 player goes, and then you do the um, in, end of the season. So we're just gonna walk through that really quick. So the American player can do a handful of things. So a lot of the stuff that happens in this, well, they can do two things with cards, but a lot of stuff that happens in this game is based on some of the stuff that these cards say, right? Some of the information on the card, hopefully the mic hasn't been too scratchy yet. Notice it was laying up against me, right? So you have things that you can sell on the card. You have the event that's happening playable. If Hamet's army has been created, place two additional Arab infantry with Hamet's army, right? So he recruits some Bedouins, right? That's what this card is. Um, you can either play this card for the text on the card, and that's what you're doing on your turn, then it goes to your discard, or you have some special cards. These ones, your core cards are some special cards. Remember that circle? If you play this card, it gets removed from the game. If you play this card right here, right? You can also play it for its text, right? If you play it for the text, this would leave the game. And then you have this card down here. If it's played, it's to play, it's to set the end of the game, right? So you have the win conditions. And then you have this symbol right here, which is, I don't know if you guys can see very well, it's cross rifles. There's the lightning bolt. If this one is played for its text, it could only be played in response to something happening to you or well to battle, right? So if this, in this one, it says playable at the start of a land battle, all Marine infantry units hit on a roll of five or six each round of combat. So with this one, if it's played, goes into your discard. If this one's played, it gets taken out of the game. Same with this one. If it gets played, it gets taken out of the game. So now on the American turn, they can play their card for the text on the card, right? Or what they can do is they can go ahead, well, um, core events, they're called core events. I was trying to get the words for you guys. But um, what they can do is they can go ahead and just discard a card. And it can be any of these, right? And they're just discarding it. That means they're not doing the event. They're just saying with this card, right? The Americans can move two frigates from anywhere to anywhere. And moving on this is just you pick a spot. So they can pick two. Um, if they had some over here in Malta, they can move them. If they're in different harbors or out here in um, patrol areas, they can move them. But any two, they can pick up and they can move. So they can go right here and right here, right? That is movement, right? The other thing that they can do by just discarding a card, right? Just getting rid of it, not doing the text, discarding a card, is they can make, um, they can build a gunboat, right? All gunboats are built and put over here in Malta, right? The harbor of Malta. So you can discard a card to move two frigates anywhere you want, right? You remember movement is anywhere. There's not like you have to go out here, then here, then to here. It's just anywhere you want. Or you can discard a card, not using the text, to go ahead and um, create a gunboat, build, have a gunboat put into um, Malta, right? Build a gunboat's kind of what they call it. Now, you have to play a card. If you have no cards in your hand that you can play, not that you can play, but just no cards, 
then you can pass without playing a card. But you always have to play a card, right, during your round. Now, um, there's some things to think about when going through this. So, for the Americans, if you are moving into a harbor that has enemy ships, and remember this harbor because the British, we don't, we don't mingle or fight over here. Well, we mingle, we don't fight. If you're out here in the patrol zone, we can, but in here, you don't. So, um, if you go into a harbor and there's ships, then you have to go into naval combat, right? And so, how naval combat works is an American ship moves into a zone that has enemy ships, right? So, um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to um, let the other player know, hey, look, I moved in here, and I am going to get into this naval combat. You announce any cards that you're going to play for that naval combat. These are the cards with the cross rifle, which can boost naval combat things too. So you would announce any card that you're playing. This is the, the American player moving in. Um, the Also, knowing that there's going to be combat here, the Tripolitan player would announce any cards that they're putting out there. All right, so each player then rolls their dice. And how dice are rolled is you get two for any frigate, and you get one for any gunboat. So if there was a, a gunboat over there, you would get one, right? Now, for the enemy, their Corsairs, they get one. So just remember, big boat two, small boat one. You can think of it that way. Or you can go, if you're historical, you can go with that. So what happens is there'd be two dice versus four dice, right? No one's announced any battle cards, right, that they're going to play. And then you go ahead and you um, roll the dice, right? Both sides roll the dice. Oh, I'm missing one. I shortened them. It doesn't really matter. So both sides, they roll their dice, right? And then from that point, you go ahead and you look at any hits. So blue, you have to hit on a six, and remember, cards can change some of this stuff, as I talked about with the military, but you hit on sixes. So the Americans got no hits, and the Tripolitans got no hits. So that was naval combat, right? That's in harbor, right? And they got into their little combat. Nothing happened. This ship and any gunboats would go to Malta, and these, you know, they would stay in their harbor. Now, a frigate takes two hits. If they would have gotten a six on their roll, that means they damage the frigate, right? In the battle, you can put it on the side so you can remember which ones are damaged. You might have a whole bunch of ships here as you're going through everything. What happens instead of the frigate going back to Malta, it goes ahead and goes on the next year of the track, whatever the next year is, because it's being worked on. It's the idea. So once the players get here, they'll get two ships back. All right. If any Corsairs get hit, they take one hit, they get sunk, they go to the supply. Any gunboats get hit, they take one hit, um, they get sunk, they go to the supply. If you get two hits, if they were to roll two hits like this, remember that this would be sunk and the um, Tripolitan player gets it because if they get four of them, they win. All right. So, that is movement when you go into a harbor that has boats, right? The other movement that can happen is you can go into a harbor that has no boats during your movement. Once you move into these harbors, you instantly go into these battle actions, naval or bombardment. So, how a bombardment works is the... Um, you still roll the same dice. So, your frigate rolls your two dice, right? You're looking for hits. Any hits, so let's say they got a, at least one six. And only the, the ships, I can't find a six now. Only the frigates get a roll. So it's a naval bombardment. Any hit takes out one army person from the city, right? And you would take it and put it in the supply. Once the bombardment's over, back to Malta. And there are some cards that kind of mess you up in Tripoli that can sink your ships too. So you got to watch that stuff. But... Bombardment 
on hits with sixes, get rid of army back to Malta. All right. Now, those are the two things that you can do uh, with the Navy ship uh, or with the American ships. Now, you can also, if you have the armies moving around, as soon as an army moves into a city, so let's say we have Hamet's army moving, and it starts over here in Alexandria. Cards going to let you do that. But we get it, we start moving it over here. Once it goes into a port, a battle happens instantly. You get into a battle instantly. And what you do there is both sides roll your dice, right? So I do it like this. There's one blue. We would have five um, for the Arabic army, for Hamet's army. And then we'd have two that the Tripultian player would play. I've been sitting here with these cards in my hand. Would play. The Tripultian player would roll. I mean, the player attacking would roll first, but both people roll their dice. We'll count that as a roll. We go like this. And when we just count up hits, right? If there are any hits, you take away that cube. So if this was a six, we would have gotten rid of one of the um, army over here. If this, if we would have gotten a six over here, on here, or on the Marines, we would get rid of one of these pieces. And then you would go again, rolling the amount of dice that you should roll based on the people that are there. And you keep going back and forth until the battle is over. One side is won or lost, right? So here we got a hit and a hit and a hit, right? So they would take out the Marine. Oh. Um, no, actually, let's go ahead and get rid of one of these guys, right? And then that was for that one. Then both the Marine and the Arabic unit got a hit. They would take that out. Now they have Dern, right? So they've won the battle. So with land battles, you keep going back and forth until someone wins. Well, someone wins and someone loses, right? All right. And remember, this is movement for the land battle is going to be based off cards. A lot of this stuff gets based off card movement. All right, so that is the Americans. Like I said, there's a lot of just card things that kind of work through everything. The card will tell you to do this. The card will tell you to do that, right, if you play it for the event. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at what the Tripultans can do, the Tripultan play, see what they can do. All right, so of course they want to go on raids, right? They want to go out and get gold. So for this one, let's say we got... We got some people in the harbor. We knew they were going to be a snooker snooker, right? So the Tripolitan can go, Tripolitan, the try with the Tripolitan, the Tripolitan, um, what they can do is take one of their cards from their hand and, well, just like the Americans, they can play it for the event that it actually says on the card. Let me tilt it because of the light. Um, this is played in combat. Remember we talked about that. And then we don't have any, they do have lightning bolts and commons, right? If they use those, they, they leave the game. But they can also get rid of a card to do actions. They just put it in their discard. So the Tripolitan um, forces decide they go on a raid. They would take a card. They would put it in their discard because they're not using the text. They're just doing an action. So they would go ahead and do that. And then they would go out on a raid. So when that happens, they can only raid with the Tripolitan um, ships in the harbor of Tripoli. This is the only place they can raid. These are moved by a card. These are allies, and these would be their Corsairs. How they get them out is by card play, and how they would raid is if a card um, specifically says for them to raid, right? But if you're just getting rid of a card to raid, it's just the Tripolitan, Tripolitan, I'm having such a hard time with this, Tripolitan um, Corsairs will go out on a raid. When this happens, the um, any naval ships there, and it can be the Swedish naval ships as well, they go ahead and they get a chance to intercept. So they go ahead and intercept, they would roll dice, so here's four, four dice, right? Two for each ship. They would go ahead and roll them. They have to land on sixes, no sixes. That means they don't stop the pirates from going out and raiding. So the, the interception part is done, right? 
because there's ships in the harbor. Now, the Corsairs, oops, because they didn't get hit during the interception, if there was a six, if any of these dice that we rolled were a six, of course, just like naval combat, you get rid of the Corsair, but since there were no sixes to sink any of them, they get to go out on the open water and go after merchant ships. They roll dice. Ooh, that's pretty good. On any six, just like combat, but also five, any fives or sixes, they get one gold for each roll of five or six. And they go ahead and put that there. Then once the raid's over, they just kind of make it back in the harbor. Any frigates in the patrol zone do not get to try to intercept them as they go back to their harbor. All right, so that's one thing that they can decide to do. The other thing that they can do um, when discarding their cards, right? When they're discarding their cards out of their hand, remember it's not playing the event, it's, it's just getting rid of the card to do an action. When they, they can discard a card and they can build a um, Corsair, right? So they can go ahead and build themselves a Corsair. Now, everybody's limited by how many Corsairs they can build and stuff, but it's limited also the tokens let you know that it's limited. If there's no tokens there, you can't do it, right? So you can get rid of a card as a Tripolitan player. You can get rid of a card to um, build a um, Corsair. So with the Tripolitan players, you can get rid of a card to raid specifically from your harbor of Tripoli. Or you can discard a card to build a Corsair and put it into your harbor of Tripoli. All right. So now the Americans have gone. The Tripolitans have gone. And now what you have is um, the end of season. So what you do at the end of the season is you just move this track forward. So if you're in spring, you go to summer. Summer, you go to fall. Fall, you go to winter. And each time you go here, you go Americans, um, Tripolitans, and then season americans tripolitans then season if you make it to winter both go americans go tripolitans go season into season you would go ahead and bring it back to spring and you would move this to the next year and like i had said remember that when you do that you are going to depending on the year draw six draw six draw six um shuffle your discard then draw six draw all your cards and remember your card hand your hand size is only six but also, when you get to a new year, any ships that are there, and there are things that will bring some um, of the Tripoli Tripolitan um, frigates in. They get to take those frigates, and they would put it in their harbor, right? For the American frigates that are there, any frigates that are there are given out to the players. American frigates would go to Gibraltar, and then you would go through the seasons again. And you keep doing that back and forth until one side wins. If you make it all the way to 1806 and you get all the way to the end and the Americans haven't either um, pulled a peace treaty or marched on Tripoli and taken Tripoli or the Tripolitan player hasn't gotten 12 gold, sunken four American um, frigates or um, destroyed Hamid's army, which will be these white cubes and blue, that means they're no longer there. If no one has done that by the end of the winter round, right, of 1806, then it's considered a draw and both sides win, lose, however you want to look at it. All right, so that is how you play the shores of Tripoli, right? This is a circle, a circle fort, Fort Circle uh, Games game. It's a game. It's a game from Fort Circle Games. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.